I want you to close your eyes and picture this. It's June 9th, 1912, and you're 12 years old. You wake up, get out of bed, and hear a knock at your door. You and your 8-year-old sister go to see who it is. As you walk out of the bedroom, your mother invites your best friends and their parents into your home. Your mother turns to you and tells you to get ready. You're going to be spending the day with your friends, you'll be going to a local fair, and if you're good, you may even sleep over. The excitement of the news takes over you as your little sister runs into the bedroom screaming with happiness. Now imagine, that's the last time you ever see the smile on your mother and father's face. The last time you ever feel the dog run past you as it chases your sister and her excitement. The smell of coal coming from your father's clothes as he picks you up and spins you around the room. Well, those were the last time for 12-year-old Lena Stillinger and her 8-year-old sister, Ina. In fact, many of the people in that room were about to suffer the same fate, but just didn't know it yet. My name is Anthony Valentine, and this is the Velisca Axe Murders. On June 9th, 1912, Mary Moore invited 8-year-old Ina and 12-year-old Lena Stillinger to spend the night at their house. That night, the Stillinger girls and the Moore family attended the Presbyterian Church Children's Day Fair, which Sarah Moore had coordinated. They spent the entire day playing games and playing with their friends. The festival ended around 9.30. The Moore family, which consisted of the father and mother, Josiah and Sarah, and their four children, Herman, Mary, Arthur, and Paul. The Stillinger sisters walked to the Moore's house, arriving around 10 p.m., completely unaware there was someone in the house waiting for them. As the family went to sleep, the killer began in the master bedroom, where Josiah and Sarah slept. He started with Josiah, then turned to Sarah. Josiah's face had been beaten to such an extent that his eyes were missing. The killer used the blade of the axe on Josiah, while using the blunt end on the rest of the victims. Some online sources say Josiah was hit about 30 times, but I reached out to the current owner of the establishment, an amazingly sweet woman named Martha Lynn. After speaking with Martha for well over an hour, she confirmed and disproved a lot of the theories out there. There was no way for them to tell how many times the faces were hit, they were unrecognizable. What they do know is there are multiple axe marks in the ceilings from the upward swing of the axe. The killer proceeded into the children's room and bludgeoned Herman, Mary, Catherine, Arthur, and Paul in the same way as their parents. He then returned to the master bedroom, not quite finished with the parents. By the time the killer got back upstairs, a pair of shoes that Josiah had next to the bed had completely filled with blood. The killer knocked the shoes over, giving investigators a clue that Ina and Lena were the next to meet the same fate. Investigators believed all of the victims were asleep except for Lena. They thought she was awake and tried to fight back, as she was found laying on the bed with defensive wounds on her arms. The condition of her clothing led law enforcement to speculate that the killer either sexually assaulted her or attempted to do so. The axe was found in the room by the Stillinger girls. At 7 a.m. next morning, the neighbor Mary noticed she hadn't seen any of the Moors for their morning routines. Mary knocked on the Moore's door, and when nobody answered, she called Ross Moore, Josiah's brother who lived nearby. He unlocked the front door with his copy of the house key, and opened the guest bedroom where he found Ina and Lena Stillinger's body on the bed. Ross ran back outside and told Mary to call Henry Horton, Velisca's primary peace officer. Now the Stillinger girl's mother was pregnant at the time, and was not able to see the body of her two children due to how dismembered they were. The sheriff came to the house after receiving the call, but quickly realized he was unable to handle the situation on his own. He left the crime scene. He left it unintended, and as soon as he did, about 120 people who heard about the crime quickly rushed over. All 120 walked through the house, witnessing the horrific crime scene. One man reportedly tried taking photos of the bodies, but as he left the home, Ross grabbed his camera and destroyed it after beating the crap out of this man. I mean, rightfully so. Now with a crime this horrible, this violent, as you would expect, comes with its fair share of paranormal activities. Many of the guests have experienced things such as knocking, hearing voice, footsteps, and even seeing a few of the victims. 
while on the phone with the owner, Martha Lynn, she told me about an experience a guest had recently. A few women rented the house for a few nights and decided to bring in a Ouija board to try to contact any of the victims from that night. After messing around with the board for a while, they apparently got in contact with Ina. There was a pencil near the board and asked if she can draw something, and Martha was in disbelief when she heard what Ina did. There was a faint sketch of a stick figure on the board. The next day, the women went out to take pictures in front of the house. In the window of the house, they caught a figure standing there. A young girl that had seemed to have half of her face missing. These murders were never solved. There were quite a few suspects, but no concrete evidence. They suspected everybody from the state senator to the possibility of it just being a homeless person. Now, I believe it was Reverend George Kelly. Kelly was supposed to attend the church gathering on June 9th, but never showed. They were even more surprised when they found out he fled Iowa right after the bodies were discovered on June 10th. He was picked up in 1917 and tried for the murders. The first trial ended in a hung jury and he was acquitted of the second trial. Another good suspect was a serial killer, Henry Moore, no relation to Josiah. He was convicted of quite a few axe murders, but was suspected in over 25 axe murders all across the Midwest at the same exact time. Years later, the Cannes Police Department desperately tried solving the case. In hopes of finding a new lead, they hired a medium, hoping she would be able to give some insight. They never told her where she was going or the history of the location. As soon as they drove up to the house, they opened the back of the squad car and let this woman out. As soon as the door opened, she started to hysterically cry. She refused to go into the house or even get out of the car. She just kept crying and saying, the kids, my god, the kids. A few years ago, a group of paranormal investigators went to the Velisca house. During the investigation, 37-year-old Robert Stephen Lawrenson was investigating part of the house on his own. After a while, his friends heard him screaming for help. His friends rushed in to find him laying on the floor with a hunting knife stabbed into the front of his chest. They called the police and he had been helivac to a local hospital. Now, unfortunately for poor Martha, no one informed her on what was happening. She was home when she turned on the radio and heard there had been a stabbing in the old Velisca house. Now, no one is sure on exactly what had happened in the house. From what I know, the investigator had never done an interview with anybody speaking about what he had seen. This case is so interesting, and part of the reason I love it so much is the paranormal activity that surrounds it. I'm going to link the website in the description. The site is filled with so much information and a lot of the pictures of the house. If any of you ever get the chance to stay at the Velisca house, make sure to talk to Martha and pick her brain like I did. The stories this woman has will absolutely blow you away. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this episode, and if you did, let us know in the comments below if you know of any of these kind of cases that people may not have heard about. And as always, don't forget to tickle that little notification bell, hit that like button, and beat that subscribe button like the redheaded stepchild it is, and I will see you guys later.